What's up, freaks? This is Steve Eckert with Steve Says, episode number 82. I have you on a couple of different screens here. So if you want some interaction and have any questions, comments, put them down. I can see them down in the monitor below. So just jump in, join the conversation down there. We're talking about some things today. It's a mathematical equation for guaranteed success. No matter how crazy shit gets and how chaotic your life becomes, and I'm going to give real examples of this and how to break this down to get through the most chaotic, the most crazy of freaking situations. As you know, Steve says is, is all about things that maybe what you don't want to hear, but what you absolutely freaking need to hear. As you know, some people will hate, but most can relate. We are bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. And this week on episode number 82... We are, it's, it's scientific facts. It's a, it's a formula I'm going to teach you. It's E plus A minus E minus E equals our answer, the solution, which is DR. And we're going to break it all down. Sounds like craziness. Sounds like some, some weird fucked up shit in my head, but I'm going to break it down. It's going to make sense and it's going to actually change your life and help you navigate through the crazy shit in life. Just like we did this past week during the project, the voice, my voice is finally coming back. It's we're on Wednesday right now. We finished the project, the men's personal development, a four day personal development program for men. We finished this last Friday. My voice is finally starting to come back. And this equation that I'm going to go over today is exactly what allowed the 12 men that made it through, allowed them to graduate and transform and be reborn as new men to become even better husbands, even better fathers, better leaders, better entrepreneurs, better managers, and better just men and humans in general. There were 19 that started, only 12 made it, and this equation that I'm going to go over today is the exact reason why those 12 made it. This is the equation that we, we drill into them over and over without them even knowing it. Also on this week, this week's episode, we're going we're gonna to talk about how have you been handling this crisis now that it's not even a crisis, this fucking life, right? There's no more pandemic or crisis. This is just life. And I've been saying it, telling you that all along that this is the new reality and, and it looks like it's going to be going even backwards again. And it's already been, what, eight, nine months and, and there's talk of things getting pushed back. So how have you been handling this new world, this, this new reality? And are you prepared to handle the next crisis or the next level of it? Or whatever comes your way, whatever craziness comes your way. And then I want to ask you something. Are you expecting the best, but prepared for the absolute freaking worst in all areas of your life? Steve says, as you know, is a live show on how to have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy obstacles, preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances, so that you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own freaking terms. We're talking about mind, body, and your business, your career, your life in general. It's all about having a role model mindset. I call it OTD, operate to dominate in your mind, your body, and your business. And this is what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break down this equation for you. Let's, let's go to that equation. Sounds all fucked up. Sounds like it doesn't even make sense. E plus A... Now think of that in parentheses, E plus A, then minus, in another set of parentheses, E minus E. And that's, what we're really going to talk about is the difference and the connection between discipline and resiliency. That's the answer. The discipline resilience continuum. It's a circle. It's a circle. This is how these 12 men made it and seven didn't. That's how only 60% graduated this, this project and how really less than 60% of you out there are handling the fucked up world in the, in the right way, in the positive way, and still marching forward, still making things happen, still living life with happiness and freaking fulfillment and making freaking money. Not even 60% of you. But this equation will give you a guaranteed, much greater chance of success. And we're talking about emotional discipline, emotional resiliency. So let's break this down. E plus A. E plus A. That's effort plus attitude. That's maximum effort and a positive fucking attitude. Combined together, just, just hard work. Hard freaking work. And then you minus out your ego and your emotions. And that's going to equal the discipline and resiliency. The emotional discipline and emotional resiliency you need. Now, discipline and resiliency are two different things. 
So let's break that down. Because let me tell you, that, that's why it's a continuum, right? Let's say discipline is here. Resiliency is here. Discipline will give you more resiliency. Resiliency will lead to more discipline, which will lead to more resiliency. It's a never-ending freaking circle. And that's what it takes to get through the crazy shit that's going on in the world. Because discipline generates resiliency. Resiliency generates discipline. And if you've been following Steve Says, you know that discipline is a foundation to every fucking thing we talk about. It all really comes down to discipline. But that's not the only thing you need. That's going to lead to other things like the need to be resilient. And we're going to break that all down. So let's break the, let's first separate the two. Discipline versus resiliency. Cause I know a lot of people, I've talked about emotional discipline. We've talked about emotional resiliency and people think that usually it's the same thing. Not the same thing. So let's go to the definitions of it, right? Discipline is an action or an inaction that's regulating human and animal behavior to its society or environment that it belongs to. Discipline can mean training or developing by instruction and by exercising, especially in self-control. That's discipline. That's self-discipline. Training to act in accordance with rules or a drill. Think about military discipline. These are all discipline. These are all discipline. It's an activity. It's exercising. It's a a regimen that's going to develop or improve your skills. It's training. Discipline is training. Discipline is literally training. It's a practice. It's a habit. It's a, a way of life, a way to, uh, to, to set your day and set your standards. You know, we like to say, don't only set your standards. You need to set your standards, then live your standards and enforce your standards. And that takes fucking discipline. That takes discipline. So then let's flip the coin. What is resilience? Now, resilience is the capacity or the ability to recover quickly from difficulties or, or tough shit going on or crises or fucking pandemics or lockdowns or riots or stupid presidential bullshit that I see going on. It's the ability to spring back, to bounce back, to regain your intended shape of your freaking mind and your life and your existence. Elasticity. Think about that. Resilience is elasticity. Ready to snap back. One of my Good friends and mentors, Bedros Koulian calls it bounce back ability. Having a bounce, that's really what resiliency is. The, the, the power or ability of a material of you, your life, your existence, the universe to return to its original form or position after being bent out of shape or being twisted or turned or pulled in different mental and emotional directions. We're not even talking physically here. Of course, you do need to be physically resilient, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking emotionally emotional discipline, and emotional resiliency. So that's really the the difference between the two. Again, resiliency is ability to recover rapidly and under control and readily from whether it's illness or adversity or big changes in your life. Think about uh, something that floats. It sinks for a while, but then slowly comes back up. Buoyancy, that's freaking resiliency. Readily avail ability to recover from a, a crisis or craziness or bad shit that goes on. Cause life's gonna go, you know, shit's gonna go sideways all the time, as you see. So I want to really break down the difference of those two first, because it takes emotional discipline to, to generate emotional resiliency. That resiliency will lead to more emotional discipline, to more resiliency. And when it breaks down to it, is this, listen to this. And I want you to take, like, this is the key point right here. I want to tell you right off the bat before we even go into more of this. Emotional discipline is what you are in control of in your life. Now, emotional resiliency are things that you have no control over, but you need to deal with and handle and bounce back and get back to your center. So think of emotional discipline right here. Think of bad shit, good shit, whatever. Shit out of your control here. Things in your control here. Things out of your control here. Emotional discipline keeps you here, but it's in your control. There's things out of your control that are going to happen up here and down here. Resiliency is what's going to allow you to bring it back and keep it centered. So the emotional discipline is what you can control. Emotional resiliency are the things you can't control that you need to deal with and the abilities to deal with them. Think of it that way. It's it's a much easier way to think about it. And resilience is really made up of self-awareness, mindfulness, taking care of yourself, self-management. These are all parts of emotional intelligence really creating positive relationships and having a purpose all that really sums up self-awareness mindfulness self-care positive relationships having a purpose all equals fulfillment 
And if you follow the project, you know our four F-bombs. And no one of them is not fuck. I know I like to say the, that's my favorite F-bomb. But the four F-bombs of the project, the program that we run, is family, fitness, finances, and faith. And all of those lead to the secret fifth and probably most important of the F-bombs, fulfillment. That's what you need to think about. There's a, 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 And all this stuff, really, when it goes back to, goes back to freaking Greek philosophy, Stoic philosophy. There was a quote. Think Marcus really said, if it's endurable, endure it. Stop complaining. Like, shut the fuck up. Stop whining and complaining. Shit could always be a lot worse. And that's just you not having resilience. People who, who think they can't handle it. Listen, if it's endurable, endure it. If it's not endurable, you're going to be, you're, you're going to be dead. You're going to longer, no longer exist. So then you're just dead anyway. What's the difference? Like, and most things are not going to freaking kill you. So, Get over it. Stop being a little bitch. Like that's really what it comes down to. Resiliency is the ability to to realize when you're starting to be a little bitch, you're starting to negotiate with that inner bitch, but having the ability to bounce back and get back to your center, back to your emotional discipline. Because there's things that will pull you, different vices and and different things that are going to pull you in in wrong direction. And it's out of your control. Shit's going to happen that's out of your control. Resilience is the ability to deal with those so you can get back to the fucking center of the shit you can control. And then let me tell you something. First off, you need to be able to endure and not complain and not be a little bitch about even the things that you cannot control. Even the things you can't control, you got to stop bitching about and complaining about because you can't control it. So what is bitching and complaining about stuff and bitching and whining and moaning and poor boo fucking who, poor little me, what is that going to do for you if you can't control it? So now let's look at the things you can control. Now, if you're bitching and moaning about things you can control, you're just a miserable fuck and you need to snap the hell out of it. Things you can control, like your positive attitude, the effort you put in, right? We said the maximum effort plus a positive attitude, minus the ego, minus the emotions. All four of those you can control. Two, you can control yourself in doing, the attitude and the effort. Two, you can control yourself in not doing, subduing your fucking ego. Not letting your emotions freaking hijack you and hijack your decisions and the stupid fucking shit that you vomit out of your mouth. That's how you eliminate the two E's, the ego and the emotions. And that will equal the equation of emotional discipline and emotional resilience continuum. That's the, what it will do. It's, it's, they're, they are totally re- reciprocating each other. They're feeding each other. It's a nonstop fuel. It allows you to endure anything. That's endurable. If it's not endurable, you're dead anyway. So stop being a little bitch. Stop crying and complaining about shit you can't control. And shit you can control. How could you, how you, you're complaining about, look at yourself in the fucking mirror. That's what you need to do. Instead of pointing outwards and blaming other people and and looking for approval other places. When it all starts, we know it starts with you. It starts in your fucking own head, right? The mind, the body. In, in the ancient Stoics, the ancient Stoics, thousands of years ago, we're talking about motherfuckers wearing robes and sandals. They really, all these books you see here, literally for the most part, except maybe some business stuff or sales stuff, even some of the sales stuff. This stuff originated from thousands of years ago, from books thousands of years ago, from ancient philosophers, mostly Stoic philosophy. In Stoic philosophy, they say the goal of life is living in, in accordance with nature, both your own nat- your own nature and the nature of the whole universe. So shit you can't control. You can't com- control a-, a pandemic. You can't control a stupid fucking government that's locking things down. You can't control some morons running for president and all this other stuff. You can't control that shit. You can't control it. It's just the way the way it is. It's the way shit is. But you can control yourself. You can control your effort. You can control your attitude. You can control your ego. You can control your fucking emotions. Which means you can control your emotional discipline. You can control and build and grow your emotional resiliency. Because all it is, is a, is a culmination of those two pluses and those two minuses. That's it. That's all you need to fucking do. Instead of spending hours a day on the internet bitching like a fucking moron about presidents and elections and all this other bullshit that's doing absolutely nothing for you. Make no mistake about it. Whoever becomes a president is not going to affect your fucking income. You are going to affect your income, your effort, your attitude, your ability to subdue your ego, 
and not your, let your emotions hijack you, that's what's going to fucking make you money. That's what's going to make you happy. That's what's going to give you fulfillment. Not some who the fucking president is. You can't control all this other shit. Shit getting locked down, all this other stuff. So stop bitching and moaning. Stop being a little bitch. You need to be, li- li- they say, living in accordance with nature, with your inner self, with the entire world, and with the rest of the people out there. Yeah, there's a lot of fucked up, stupid ass people out there. Guess what? Deal with it. It's called them just going around being humans and them doing their part in the universe that make the universe what the fuck it is. The universe wouldn't be what it was without a bunch of stupid motherfuckers out there, right? You wouldn't be able to stand out without those stupid motherfuckers bitching and whining and complaining. You wouldn't be able to go make money and be successful and make an impact without all those stupid motherfuckers out there wasting time on the internet, bitching and moaning and crying about other stuff. Think about that. Because they are not putting in the effort. They have a poor fucking attitude. They're letting their egos take over and they have no control of their emotions. So they have no emotional discipline and no emotional resiliency. You can, you'll fucking dominate. You will stand out head and shoulders above a motherfucker like that. Think about that. In the Stoic philosophy, they also say, they, they, they basically say that the supreme good is living according to nature. And that is something that is within each person. Because it's just you viewing, doing the right thing, doing all those things that I just said, those four, those two pluses and those two minuses. It's all your, it's all within your capacity to do. Now you think that a fucking president can do that for you. You think that either a lockdown or a not lockdown, a fucking mask, a face diaper and all this other dumb shit. No face diapers making you money. All right. It's not making you money. It's not making you fucking happier. Whether you want to put a fucking face diaper on or not. It's not doing anything for you. So you could argue it. And people spend hours arguing on on the internet about the face diapers. About the presidents. And about all this other shit. It's fucking craziness. You have already all the tools you need to be successful. To make an impact. To have fulfillment. To make fucking money. Already there. It's already there. E plus A minus E minus E. Equals that emotional discipline, emotional resiliency that will get you through any fucking situation. That's exactly what these men did in the project this week. And that's all it takes for what what the in philosophy they call the, the supreme happiness. That's all it takes for fulfillment. Regardless of what's going on around you. Regardless of your fucking cars and your house. None of that matters. Or someone to motivate you. You go to a workshop and you jump up and down and you scream and shout and high five people and, and hug it out and all this other bullshit that you see at some bullshit ass motivational seminars. It's all useless. If you don't have the E plus the A and if you don't minus the E and the E, it's all fucking useless. You will have no fulfillment. You will have no supreme freaking happiness. You will have no control of yourself or your life. You'll just be a fucking puppet with the universe Or some other motherfucker pulling the puppet strings, controlling every move you make. And that's the way shit on the fucking internet. That's the way 90% of the people are. You're you're just getting pulled. Your strings are getting pulled. You're a little puppet. That's what you're doing. Clip those fucking strings on the puppet. Clip the strings. That's what you need to do. Clip it by having giving maximum effort, having a positive attitude, fucking working hard, subduing your ego. And eliminating your emotions. You need to eliminate the two E's, the ego and the emotion. Because you let your ego take you over in the stupid fucking arguments on the internet. You let your emotions take over in those stupid fucking arguments on the internet. And in everything you do. Because if you're doing it there, where else are you doing that shit in your life? I guarantee you that shit is popping up in your personal relationships, in your professional relationships, in your business relationships, in your money making endeavors. I guarantee you that shit's popping up your fucking ego and your emotions. And you're not working hard enough and you have a shitty fucking attitude. Think about that. Such a simple equation to get through this shit. And this is exactly what these gentlemen needed to do. Why only, why 60% of them made it and 40% did not make it because of this simple equation. This is the, the, the equation, a literally a, a, an equation for life to get you through every fucking day to live in the moment, the present fucking moment right now. Not worry about the shit that happened in your past. Not stress and have anxiety for what's going to happen in the future. Hell no. The, the moment right now, this is how you do it. This is it. And it sounds so simple, but it's as fucking complex as it gets. But it is within you already. You don't need any outside forces. You don't need anything to make this happen. This is the way to have success. 
to make an impact, to change millions of lives, to make millions of dollars. This is all it takes. And it sounds fucking simple, but this is it. It ain't easy. It's simple, but it ain't fucking easy. I'll eliminate the two E's. There's no room for emotions or ego during chaos and crisis, during wartime. And, and make no mistake about it, I say, I've been saying it for years, the invasion is coming. Guess what, motherfucker? The invasion is here. It is here with all the stupidity going on around the world. So there is no room for emotions and egos during a time of war, during time for battle. There's no room for it. So when I realized that maybe my emotions are getting the most of me or the ego is getting the most of me, put out more effort. Put out more fucking effort. Stop bitching and complaining. Get off your ass. Whatever you're doing, do 10 times more. Do a fucking 100 times more whatever you think you're doing. That's it. With a positive attitude. That's it. Remaining emotionally disciplined, emotionally resilient to the things you can't control, emotionally disciplined with the things you can control. So when things are starting to go to shit, I'll literally, I'll sit down, sometimes close my eyes, not close my eyes, maybe a a blank piece of paper and a pen, and I'll tell myself, literally I'll tell myself this in my head, all right, things are fucked up, things are going to shit, I need to sit here, I need to focus, I need to focus, I need to block everything out, I need to focus, I need to step back outside of the situation, I need to step back. And ask myself, what is the mission? What is the intent of the mission? And rather than just sit and complain and bitch like a whiny motherfucker like on the internet, what can I do? What can I do right fucking now to get myself back on track? What step? What action can I take? Not what book can I go read? Not what notes can I overlook? Not what strategy I can start thinking about and putting into place and planning. No, fuck that. What action? What can I do? D-O. Fuck, try, do. Fuck thinking about it, do. Fuck even leadership and philosophy and all this and personal development. It's all bullshit. It's all just theory until you fucking do. Until you start applying it and taking action. So I ask, I tell myself, all right, things are fucked up. Things have gone to shit. I need to step back. I need to focus. I ask myself, what's the mission? What's the intent? And what can I do right now? What action can I take right now? Literally do. Like physically do. Right now to get myself back on track. That's what it takes to get back. To to keep building those emotionally resilient muscles. Because both of these, emotional discipline and emotional resiliency, both require practice. They require reps. One you can control. One you can't control. But you really can control them both. If you Keep letting them feed off each other and you sit back and just do what you can do. Because if you're thinking about what can you personally do right now to get back on track, that's something you can control. It might be as simple as stopping a little bitch, stop getting inside my own head, stop doubting myself so that I can go make that that phone call that I've been avoiding, go have that difficult conversation I've been avoiding because I'm all over the place and can't handle it and you're all out of whack. Get back to the center. Get back to the fucking center of your emotional discipline. That's the way you need to fucking think about it. They, they, they also say living in agreement with nature means acting with virtue. That's what the Stoics say. It's all about virtue and, and that is under your control. And then you seem to accept all that outside shit. Accept it. What's not under your control. Accept all the bullshit. That, and that's where the resiliency comes in. You need to be able to deal with the shit that's not in your control. Because if you can't deal with the shit in your control, you need to have a whole, you need a fucking lobotomy or something. So you need to be able to accept the shit that's not in your control and, and deal with it and realize that's just the fucked up world we live in. That's the fucked up world. That's the universe. And, as, and if you think about it, it's the fucked up world that we live in, but it's the beautiful world we live in. The fucked up, it's, it's, it's beautiful and it's fucked up in this. Because that's what makes this fucking rock that we're on for a very short amount of time spin the fuck around. That's what makes it spin around. So just accept the fucking douchebags and the fucking haters and the scumbags and the rioters and all this other bullshit as part of the universe. It's what balances things out. It's what's going to make you stand the fuck out. Because what you need to do is do this equation that we're talking about. You need to stand the fuck out or get the fuck out. Get the fuck out of this universe. Get the fuck out of this country. Whatever the fuck you want to talk about. Get the fuck out of the business you're in. Get the fuck out of the family you're in. Whatever it is. You either need to take this equation and put it into practice and get those reps in and training in so you can stand the fuck out around this universe, the beautiful fucked up in this of the universe, so you can stand the fuck up. 
Stand the fuck out. Stand up, stand out, or get the fuck out. That's the way I like to see it. I'm going to finish with this story. I've told it a couple of times before, but it's worth telling again. Not a story, a fable or whatever you want to call it. Where there was a farmer. There was a farmer who had a horse. He had a horse. He had the, the, the greatest horse around. It, it, was, it was doing so much work around the farm. He was going to have the most successful, making the most money of any farm around. The neighbors come by the man's house. They're like, Jimmy, you're so lucky. You have the greatest horse around. He's bigger and stronger and faster than all the other horses. He's going to do twice as much work. Your farm is going to be the greatest farm around. You're so lucky. And Jimmy said, nah, we'll see. The next day, his son is playing with the horse. Horse runs away, runs out the fence and leaves. All the, all of Jimmy's neighbors comes over and they say, Jimmy, oh my gosh, you had the, you had the, you had the greatest horse. Now it ran away. What are you going to do? How are you going to work on your farm? You, you don't, you're not going to get everything done. You're not going to make any money this season, whatever it is. And Jimmy says, yeah, we'll see. The next day, the horse comes back and it brings three more horses with it. Each one is faster than the next. Each one is stronger than the next. Even stronger and faster than the original horse. So now he's got the four top horses around. He's going to dominate. He's going to dominate. He's going to make millions of fucking dollars. The neighbors come by. They say, Jimmy, you're so lucky. Now you have four horses. You're going to be running the show. You're going to have the greatest farm on this side of the Mississippi River. Jimmy says, yeah, we'll see. The next day, his son is trying to tame one of the horses, riding one of those new wild horses that came in. The horse bucks him off. His son breaks his freaking leg. The neighbors come by. I'm so sorry your son broke his leg, one of those wild horses. It's it's such a tragedy. He broke his leg and he's injured, whatever. He can't help you on the farm now either. Jimmy says, yeah, we'll see. The next day, the military recruiters, the army recruiters come around. They were going door to door, taking all the young men to go off to battle to fight. Most of which are going to die. They got to Jimmy's house. His son was there with a broken leg. They couldn't send him off to war. All the neighbors came by his house. They said, you're so lucky. Your son didn't get dragged off to war. They took all of our sons away. They're probably going to die. We don't know what's going to happen to them. And Jimmy said, eh, we'll see. The point of the story is he couldn't control any of that shit. You can't control any of that shit. All he can control is his mind, how hard he's going to work, his attitude towards the situation. He can sit there and be all up and down and have zero emotional resiliency, zero emotional discipline, and just bitch and fucking moan and cry and complain, oh my God, the horse ran away. Oh my God, my son broke his leg. And freak the fuck out and make poor decisions. Not maintain his character that he needs to lead his family, to lead his business, to move forward in his fucking life. So when shit goes bad, shit's going sideways. Don't freak the fuck out. Calm the fuck down. And just say, nah, whatever. We'll see. We'll see. That's all it takes. It's as simple Equation E plus A minus E minus E equals emotional discipline, emotional resiliency. Again, effort plus attitude minus your fucking ego and your emotions equals emotional discipline, which you can control, emotional resiliency, which is the ability to deal with the shit you can't control. And emotional resiliency is the bounce back ability to get back to your emotional discipline where you're centered and under control because such shit will pull you out. No one's fucking perfect. You can have the greatest emotional discipline in the world. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to get drawn out by the fucking, the the douchebags, the scumbags, the losers, the fucked up shit that goes on in that that beautiful universe out there. It's going to pull you out. That emotional resiliency is the built up muscles through repetitions, through experience through time, that's going to bring you back and keep you centered. And the more you do, you, you practice both of those, the stronger they make each other and the more unfuckwithable that you will become. The more impenetrable, more bulletproof you will become that you'll be able to navigate this fucked up, beautiful universe no matter what the fuck happens next. Because shits are probably going to get worse before it gets better out there. But it don't fucking matter to you if you just follow this simple equation. Now, if you have any questions comments, put them down below. I haven't been able to see because this was far away and I was Instagram. I know once you
There, I might have stepped on it. There. So I will check the comments on Facebook. If you have any questions, comments, put them down below. And listen, speaking of the project, if you have any interest in the project, send me a quick message. Let's talk about the project is a 75-hour fully immersive experience. And that's all I can call it is an experience for men. Not a workshop, not a seminar. This is an experience where you're, it's a, a physical, mental, and emotional experience for men where you're getting a chance to live and train and learn with myself, who's a United States Marine, an entrepreneur, with a Navy SEAL, with a SWAT officer, with a martial arts expert who's also the vice president of Truly Nutrition, who now just hit $1 million per month in the supplement industry after less than two years in the industry, as well as the business coach and business empire builder, the CEO of Fit Body Bootcamp, Pedro Skoulian, who is a massive empire builder, joining forces to help men to unfuck themselves, to kill the inner bitch, to unleash the beast so that you can be an even better father, better husband, better leader, better entrepreneur, and better fucking man. That's what it's all about. So you can level up in your family, your fitness, your finances, and your faith, leading to real freaking fulfillment in life so that you can kill the bitch, unleash the beast, if you have any questions about it, just send me a message. We'll get you up on the phone and see if you're a good fit for that program or if you need any one-on-one peak performance accountability coaching so you can operate to dominate in your mind, your body, and your business. Let me know. Let's talk about it. I will talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.